Welcome to the Into the Planet podcast. I know you usually tune in here for stories about action and adventure, but today we're going to cover something a little bit different and talk about branding and social media. Yeah, it's not the first thing you think of when you're like up in the Arctic in the water with a polar bear, is it? Like, <laughs> Well, some people do, but I mean, <laughs> you and I grew up um, pre-social media, well, pre-internet actually. Well, I grew up when we were communicating in Morse code on telegraphs. It's smoke signals. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, I mean, it, early in my career, when I wanted to uh, query a magazine about potentially taking an article of mine, I wrote a letter yeah. and put in photographic prints and mm -hmm. mailed it with a wing and a prayer. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. yeah so, it, like I said, you know, for those of you who don't know, uh, Jill is... An underwater filmmaker, photographer, explorer. She's the explorer in residence of the Royal Canadian Geographical Society. Uh, her memoir, Into the Planet, was a best selling Canadian book a couple years ago. Uh, she's published uh, probably dozens, right, of like technical manuals and how to books on underwater photography and technical diving and rebreather diving and cave diving. And all that, you know, that's that's a lot. That's a career. But you know the old saying, picks or it didn't happen? If Jill couldn't bring back images and video of all these incredible places that she'd explore, I, no one would know about it. Yeah, what some people may not realize is that I actually have a formal education in visual communications design, and I used to own a small advertising company. So I sort of learned that creative background first yeah. and then took my creative life underwater for part B of the career. Right. Yeah. And yeah. what people may not know is that I have a formal education and experience as a professional photographer and photojournalist. And although it's really hard, <laughs> hard to tell from this. For the military, <laughs> you forgot, like for the U.S. Navy Seabees. Yeah, yeah, I did it in yeah. the military, and yeah. I was a photography instructor as well. But it means you did a lot of public affairs. You right. did a lot of PR work exactly. as well. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. back in those days, of course, we were we were shooting film, and we were mm -hmm. processing it and printing it and doing the same process that you were talking about, mm -hmm. which is we would go ahead and, and, and send proof sheets over, uh, you know, to a publisher. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had things published in, you know, uh, Time magazine and in uh, all hands. Hands magazine, which is the Navy magazine, as well as the Stars and Stripes and other military type, uh, you know, publications. But it started the same way. Mm -hmm. I'd mm -hmm. have to pitch a story. Pitch a story, print the prints in the dark room. Right. Yeah. And of course, in your case, get them approved before you could even oh, yeah. send something yeah. out. Yeah. All, our stuff had to yeah. be approved because it was military. But, you know, but these in, days, a young explorer or an early career professional in the underwater world you know, has to have a social media presence. Like whether I'm trying to get funding for a grant or I'm pitching a television program or I'm trying to get a major publisher to pick up a book, I have to show them my quote unquote platform right. and that I have a lot of genuine engagement with people because that's who they see as the group that I will sell the product to. That's right. And, you know, the reality of it is, is that you could be the greatest writer in the world. You could be the greatest photographer in the world. But if you haven't already established yourself with a following that you've worked really hard to, to gather and, you know, create your, quote, tribe, you're going to have a hard time getting mm -hmm. any, any major media company or publisher interested in your work. And don't even think about, like, buying likes. You know, there are a lot of oh, yeah. different, like, yeah. not very reputable organizations that can suddenly, you know, turn your Facebook following from, you yeah. know, 10 viewers right. to 10,000 viewers. Sure. And, um, you know, people see through that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, these have to be authentic real people that you're actually engaging with, right. meaning that you are answering comments. Absolutely. And now I know this all sounds like a lot, but but it's really important for yeah. your for your career, for your progression, because the first thing that happens when you apply for a grant or a job or anything else is that those looking to hire you or potentially, you know, give you a grant will Google you mm -hmm. and they see everything. Right. <laughs> yeah. And and like Jill mentioned the word engagement. That's the most important part of this this whole whole uh, algorithm. Mm -hmm. uh, everything from YouTube to Twitter to TikTok to Instagram to Facebook. It's not just about you throwing it out there into the world, 
but it's also about getting positive reactions and interacting with your mm -hmm. followers. Now, if you're getting negative comments or trolls or things like that, ignore those. It's not about you. Oh, I'm sorry. That was <laughs> it's me. It's about them. I'm sorry, Jill. What? I was, I interact, I mean, I, I'm the troll. Oh, <laughs> I'm the troll on your. On I thought you farted or something. Oh, I'm like, no. I don't well, smell I it might. yet. We, we actually had, we actually had, Bollywood pizza. Yes, yeah. we had Bollywood pizza today. But fortunately, this is not smell. Which of it. is kind of like it's 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 uh, butter chicken on a pizza. Kinda. Yeah, it's butter chicken yeah. on a pizza with it with incredible amounts of cheese, amounts of cheese and turmeric and uh, it's good stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we, then immediately we had to have ice cream to cool our mouths down. <laughs> but back to branding, it's kind I'd of rather a, talk about ice cream not me <laughs> it's kind of a double-edged swor sword sword like it's really important for you to get your brand out there and spend a certain amount of time like cultivating that right but you can't get lost in the weeds or take anything to heart from the trolls and the negative responses yeah. like that can be really unhealthy psychologically so uh, I always advise to people like you decide how much time each day you can dedicate to mm -hmm. to doing that and then and then get yourself some sort of an automated um, helper software that will make it a little bit faster or easier for you to monitor comments and yeah. things. Something like yeah. Buffer right. or um, Hootsuite a lot of people right. use. And if you're on YouTube, uh, use the YouTube studio, mm -hmm. which will will sort out all of that for you. It's got mm -hmm. great analytics. It'll have all your comments, no matter mm -hmm. which video they comment on. It'll mm -hmm. have all those comments in a row, and you can just knock them off you know, immediately and start answering them. And when you engage those comments, That's right. you're more likely to get to the point where YouTube will monetize right. your channel, and you'll get right. a little bit of money at the end of the month. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about YouTube while we're mm -hmm. at it. Mm -hmm. um, YouTube is changing constantly and you know trying to figure out the YouTube algorithm is an industry in and of itself <laughs> but these days what YouTube is really looking for is engagement and that first oh say two minutes of watch time on each video so you know get right to the content mm -hmm. on YouTube don't try to you know look like a network TV show with titles and credits and all kinds of splashy graphics. And that used to be the way to do it. That's lots the way of we splashy did it. stuff, yeah. lots and then an yeah. ad up front. But right, now right. don't do that. And if you look at Jill's YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Jill Heinerth, uh, you know, you'll see that that's the way we used to make videos because that was what the algorithm wanted. They wanted something that looked like a network or cable TV show. But now they really want you to get right to the point. Right, exactly. And you're going to get some sort of extra points or yeah, credit, basically, yeah. when somebody sticks with your video. That's and, right. And they're not going to stick with it. If you go to an ad in the That's first right. 60 seconds, they're right. going to go, Ugh. So I, I, have a, I have a formula that I always use in, in on YouTube, or really, and it, it applies to a lot of other uh, environments as well. But tell them what you're going to tell them, then tell them. Then tell them what you just told them. And that's the basic recipe for a successful speech, for a for successful stories. pitch or that's story right. or anything yeah. else. But respect your viewer's yeah. time. Don't make a 10-minute video because you think that 10 minutes of content is going to be more likely no. to end up monetized, Not right? At all. If you can tell the story in two minutes, tell that's it right. in two minutes right. and be respectful of your viewers. Yeah, and don't beg for subscriptions and followers mm -hmm. and likes and thumbs up and all that kind of stuff. Uh, maybe throw that on a, you know, tag it on it the end of mm -hmm. the uh, of the video uh, but believe me interaction comments mm -hmm. uh, also when people share your video like if they send it to someone else YouTube loves that then here's another pet peeve I have and this is really important when you're establishing your social media brand you need to own your name oh yeah wherever possible right. so like Facebook I'm like you know Backslash Jill Heinerth. Right. Instagram, Jill Heinerth. YouTube, right. Jill Heinerth. Right. Now, here's why. Like, when people Google you, like, this is going to come up in the search engine, right? right? But also, you have to realize that when you message me, like, on Facebook or LinkedIn or Instagram or something like that, 
If your social media identity is ratboy579, uh, then I don't know who you are, right? Busted. I'm busted again. <laughs> no, but honestly, it happens all the time where people send me a That's private right. message. I have no idea. And I have no idea who That's I'm talking right. to because that right. private message, right. like we all tend to sh talk in right. short phrases yep. and and things now. So it'll be like, Jill, did you get the picture? Right. Ratboy789. And I'm like, I have no idea who this That's is. Right. Like, That's right. Like I have tens of thousands of people following me on different platforms. And I just was reading the other day that psychologists say that you can only keep track of about 150 friends, like mm -hmm. in terms of recognizing the faces, mm -hmm. knowing a little bit something about them. So, so that means I have 145 to go. <laughs> <laughs> but but what I am telling you is always, always, always use your name. Like if your name is John Smith and it's already taken, then maybe you're John Smith Cave Diver or John Smith Penguin or right. something. Yeah, right. you know? no, yeah. um, anything, but make sure your right. name is in there yeah. uh, because all of this is going to yeah, add going to, to your it, social well, credit. Basically. Remember that you're no, when you're online, you're no longer talking to people on these platforms. You're talking to artificial intelligence. Mm-hmm. You're basically talking to an algorithm. Mm -hmm. Software. So you have to make it as easy as possible for that software mm -hmm. to get you out into the world. Now, one other social media point that I really want to bring up is that I think that social media is increasing the risk envelope for some divers and cave divers. Oh, how's that? Well, I think that's what, what's happening now is that people post and post and post to become better known, right? right? So as their visibility increases throughout the community and they start posting about their dives or their expeditions or their projects or whatever else, and they start getting some really positive feedback, like, mm -hmm. ooh, what are you doing next? What's next? What's right. next? Then like Friday when you post that you're going off on a caving expedition for the weekend, there's some inherent pressure on you to produce some positive result that you can post Monday morning. Say, oh, you pushed the line a little further. Right. Or you discovered another passage. Right. But if you go out Friday and then you decide it's just not your day to dive right. um, and abort, then there's this sort of artificial pressure. And I've seen it on young mm -hmm. people where yeah. they feel like, Every time they put out a post, it has to be better, you know? Yeah. Like, okay, last week I was petting dogs. Well, you know, this week I need to be tearing them off of someone who's getting eaten alive, right? <laughs> okay. you know, whatever. Like, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah, everything yeah. has to be better, yeah. better, bigger. Right, yeah. And so don't let, yeah, yeah. like, your desire to post something on social media um, lead to dangerous choices. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? And that, that applies not only to diving, but to just about, you know, every aspect of social media. Mm -hmm. Also, um, privacy, your own par personal information. You, you have to be really careful mm -hmm. um, about revealing too much about where you live, your mm -hmm. phone number. Mm -hmm. your. You know, there's some people that are well, very open about it. Now, when Jill and I started online, it was almost required mm -hmm. in order to have some credibility, some, some uh, what do you want to call it, like institutional uh, authenticity. Right. Like a, yeah, when you had a website, there was some website, uh, there was some software, like when WordPress first started, mm -hmm. you actually had to have, if you had a business website or a professional mm -hmm. website, you had to have a published address mm -hmm. on the bottom of that website. Mm -hmm. And that's why we moved from Florida, because everyone, <laughs> everyone was coming over to our house, and we said, let's get out of here. Let's go hide in Canada. But think about other little privacy things, too. Like, I remember, like, a couple of years ago when you told me, oh, don't post that picture. And I was just out, like, shoveling really deep snow from around the car. Right. And uh, I thought, wow, this is amazing. Yeah. And uh, and then you said, no, 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 your license plate is showing. That's you right. really need to, like, yeah. block you, that out. Yeah, be aware of that, especially, mm -hmm. like, you people that are out in the, in the wilderness. You know, you may have a... You may be out there camping and you have your truck mm -hmm. and your rooftop tent and all that kind of your mountain bikes. And then your license plate is visible. Mm -hmm. Like, you you know, cover it with an old T-shirt or something while you're videoing. Yeah. Or, I mean, just to be honest, right now, just look behind us here. Yeah, before, we made sure there was no we private turned stuff. on this video, we actually made sure there yeah. were no passwords po posted to the wall here. Any, mm -hmm. Anything like that that, would, that mm -hmm. we don't want the world to know about. But also, you know, if you own a big you know, white cave diving van and it's got stickers yeah, all well, over course. it yeah. and everybody knows that you're at Ginny Springs on right. Tuesday morning, right? Sure. Um, 
Yeah. And that van is full of like rebreathers and scooters and things right. like that. And everybody knows that you do a dive from nine till 11 on it's Tuesday true. morning. Yeah. Then, yeah. then you may be telling the world that you've got a, a van load yeah. full of stuff that's ready to right. steal. So, you know, I, do be careful. I, I've worked with a lot of musicians. And, you know, they when they're first starting out and they're first starting to do gigs and they're getting excited about their career, you know, the, the back windows of their car will have like Fender and Gibson and, you know, Shure and all these mm -hmm. other uh, decals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, and I used to tell them, no, 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 no. You're just inviting someone to break your back window and steal yeah. your guitar. So even like diving yeah. decals on your world. vehicle yeah. really can let people know that yeah. there's something worth stealing there. Uh, so. so we're going down a little bit of a rabbit hole here. No, we're that's okay. About, it's all about, but yeah. I want to talk about Twitter. Sure. Because Twitter has become, uh, it's huge. I mean, I use Twitter. Twitter's probably the main social media platform that I use for my projects to get mm -hmm. my projects out into the world. Um, Jill, not so much. Jill's on Twitter, mm -hmm. uh, but I think that your main platform is probably Facebook, Facebook. and YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, now, just last week, Elon Musk bought Twitter. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be lots of big changes. The biggest one I'm hearing about immediately is that in order to get verified on Twitter, you're going to be able to buy that verification. Which is a blue check by your name. Right. A and little image of a blue right. check. And yes. it's supposed to indicate that yeah. you really are Jill Heinerth or Robert McClellan. Well, the funny thing is that that verification process has been broken for years. Mm -hmm. People that are like world famous and have sold hundreds of millions of records Musicians, they can't get verified because because there hasn't been a story about them in the last six weeks or mm -hmm. something on some, mm -hmm. you know, the Los Angeles Times or whatever it is. So the verification process, you know, I see people verified that have like 125 followers mm -hmm. and no one's ever heard of them before, but somehow mm -hmm. they get verified. But that's a whole other story. Twitter's changing so that what Elon Musk wants to do is monetize it. Mm -hmm. And he's wants to charge eight dollars a month. <laughs> For you to get uh, a blue a check blue next check to your mark. name. But it's also going <laughs> to prioritize your tweets. Mm -hmm. It's going to prioritize your search. It's going to knock down a little bit of the advertising. But, I, but he's like, let's just think about what this really means, right? Yeah. Like Twitter is a place where you post your content, right. your pictures, your video, your likeness. Right. So you're providing them yes. with free content. That's correct. And now they want to bill you That's right. $8 a month well, so that you can give them free stuff. Well, funny thing was <laughs> some some very successful people that have millions of followers on Twitter, like Stephen King, mm -hmm. the author. Stephen King pretty much dropped the F-bomb and told him where to shove it. <laughs> said, you should be paying me. I'm, right. I'm writing for free on your platform. Mm -hmm. And do make sure that you understand what you're giving up when you're posting something onto any oh, one absolutely. of these social media platforms. Every time you post an image on Facebook, it belongs to Mark, Zuc Mark, Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> That's maybe muck is a better name. Muck is a good name. It's a mucky place. Yeah. Every time you post an image on Facebook, you don't own it anymore. It belongs to Facebook. It belongs to Mark Zuckerberg. Mm -hmm. So don't forget that. So don't post your best HD images, your 4K, beautiful, lovely, never before, mm -hmm. never going to be able to capture it again in your life. Mm -hmm. Think about how you could monetize that image yourself before mm -hmm. you, you throw it out, you know, and give it away for free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, a lot of the fine print and some of these things says stuff like we can use this in any way on any platform in perpetuity, That's like, right. and blah, 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 yeah, blah. Absolutely. So you see a poster with your image on it, and it's like, yeah, we've seen that. Mm -hmm. We have we have been mm -hmm. out in public and we've seen Jill's images like on bus stops on mm -hmm. advertisements mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's simply because the someone lifted it from uh, Twitter or Facebook or mm -hmm. somewhere else mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. it, and you know when you're just independent people like us you know you say okay well you know what are you gonna do but if you have a beautiful image that you want to share to share it in low resolution that's like, right that's what like, i was getting at yeah. yeah so if it's a very small file there's only so much people right. can do with it right so it, you get the best of both worlds there where you've been able to share the story you've been able to right. 
increase your social credit, basically, right. but you haven't given away the goods because right. if somebody wants the full resolution, they're going to have to reach out to That's you right. and pay you. That's right. <laughs> so, I mean, we intend to stay on Twitter and use it as we have been. Mm -hmm. I'm taking sort of a wait and see approach. To oh, I'm not spending have, one dime no, on no. No, any of the platforms. I want platforms. to see how it all shakes out before mm -hmm. I decide whether or not I'm going to go ahead and Mm -hmm. Give the richest man in the world eight dollars a month. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so just to sort of wrap up our thoughts for now, like if you're a young person, especially early career professional, and um, there is a need for people to see your profile, like for grants or jobs or or collaborations, anything like that, clean up your social media um, right. brand so that's very consistent. Use your own name. And be quite thoughtful about the type of content that you want to put out there. If you want to have a private page of like images to share with your family, make it a separate account right. with a different name. But leave the preferable name yeah, yeah. for what you want out right. in the world. And likewise, if you're a party person mm -hmm. and you've got pictures of yourself, uh, you know, half asleep, drunk on the sofa, and someone drew something on your face. Uh, yeah, that's all funny and everything, but don't put it on your professional Facebook page. Well, or even on your private one, because right. they may find that through search. That's right. So, so be very careful. I mean, this is this is really how you put yourself out into the world. It's like a it's your yeah. permanent record, as my oh father my would God, say. Oh my God, it's a permanent record. <laughs> Little did we know, it's out there yeah. in the world. So, branding is important. Dedicate a certain amount of time to it every day. Make sure you engage people. Use your own name. Um, and what else? Oh. Don't forget to vote if you're in the U.S. this week. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And then the most important thing that we always want to leave with people is remember to love, love one, one another. another. So take care, everyone. See you on the next one.